In this video, we're going to learn about the electric field near a conductor, and in particular, how it relates to the charge density of that conductor. So let's say that we've got some area of a conductor that we're interested in, and we zoom in on it really, really far. What does it look like? Well, if we zoom in far enough, it'll just look like a flat plane. And in particular, if we zoom in really far, it'll look like an infinite flat plane. So if we're close enough to the surface, then we can treat an arbitrary, you know, very small section of this conductor as if it were an infinite plane with some surface charge. And I'm going to call that surface charge sigma. And we're going to assume that this is a positive surface charge. Let's just finish drawing out that. Except that now, instead of just being a surface, we also have underneath this surface is a conductor. So because we're taking a slice of the surface, this is part of a larger object, and there's just a bunch of conductor underneath. So that might be, that might be copper, that might be aluminum, it's anything that can conduct electricity. And say we want to figure out the electric field at some distance away, so say some height away from the conductor. How do we do that? Well, if we treat this like an infinite plane, then because there's the same amount of charge on the left as there is on the right, all of the electric field components, let's call this the x direction and this the y direction, all of the x components of the electric field will cancel with each other and will only be left with a z component. And similarly, all of the y all of the electric fields in the y direction from you know this bit of charge and this bit of charge will cancel with this bit of charge and this bit of charge and this bit of charge so just like was the case with an infinite sheet our electric field is just going to point straight up so we have some component ez of the electric field and because this problem has tons of symmetry so it's an infinite plane, it has a lot of symmetry. This means we can use Gauss's law to figure out what the electric field is just above the conductor. So to use Gauss's law, we have to figure out what Gaussian surface we want to use. And so let's just redraw this plane real quick. Uh, we can use whatever surface we want, but I'm going to use a, a cube just to switch things up here. So let's take some cubic section let's take a cube plop it on top of the conductor and have that penetrate through the conductor so it's not actually a cube here it's a more like a rectangular prism type thing and let's say that it's some distance h or it's got some height h and the top of that cube has some area or the top of the rectangular prism has some area and similarly on the bottom that'll also have some area and so to figure out the electric field by applying Gauss's law, we know that the electric flux is just equal to the enclosed charge divided by epsilon naught. And so this is how we f this is how we figure out what the electric field is. And recall that the electric flux is just the integral of the electric field leaving our Gaussian surface, so the integral over the surface of our the electric field that's pointing outward. So we've got a cube. Let's, let's start by figuring out what the electric flux is. And let's redraw our little plane here. We've got our plane, our cube, which is our Gaussian surface, and that extends underneath the plane, which I'll draw like this. And this Gaussian surface is at some, has some height h and some area a. So this is our top cube. So first of all, what is the electric flux on the bottom of, on the, our bottom surface? So this area here, let's call that phi bottom because we're just that creative. Well, because the bottom is inside a conductor, remember this is on top Everything that we're doing, there's a conductor underneath. The electric field everywhere inside that conductor is zero. And so the bottom flux is also going to be zero. And similarly, the same thing for all of the sides 
on the bottom cube. Now on the top, we said that the electric field was pointing straight up because we made a symmetry argument. We said, you know what, this is an infinite charged plane, even though it's just a small section of uh, a larger object, we're treating it like an infinite charged plane. And because the electric field is pointing up, that's perpendicular to all of our little DAs on the side of this cube. So all of these DAs point either to the left or to the right or front or back, but the dot product, E dotted with DA, because these two are perpendicular, this is zero. So the only surface that we have to worry about is this top surface here. So we need to figure out the flux through this top surface. And through the top surface, our area vector dA is pointing straight up. And similarly, our electric field is pointing straight up. So E dot dA on the top surface, on the top surface, is just equal to E times dA. And if we integrate that, we can find the flux. And if, because the electric field is constant, because we have symmetry here, so it's constant to the left, it's constant to the right, it's the same value, we can pull it out of the integral. So the electric field at some height away from our conductor H times the integral of dA, this is our top electric flux. And You've probably grown to absolutely love these types of integrals by now. This is just the surface area of the top of our Gaussian surface. So our top flux is just E of H times A. So that's phi top. Now to apply Gauss's law, all we have to figure out, all we have left to figure out is the enclosed charge. And because we've got a surface charge density, so we said we had some surface charge density sigma. All we care about is the area that our cube, our little cube is enclosing. And so the total charge enclosed is just our surface charge density times our area. And because the area on the top of this Gaussian surface is the same as the area that we're encapsulating the charge of, I'm just gonna call both of them A. And so now we have the charge enclosed and we have the flux, the total flux, which is just the top flux. We can set them equal to each other or the flux is equal to the charge enclosed over epsilon naught. And we have E as a function of H times our area is equal to sigma times our area divided by epsilon naught. And wonderfully, the areas cancel and we're left with our electric field some as some function of h is just sigma over epsilon naught. Now note that this is a constant. This doesn't actually depend on h, so we can actually get rid of it. And this is really interesting. So this says, as long as we're close enough, if we have some arbitrary, you know, some weird blob of conducting material that it's got, and it's got some surface charge, if we zoom in far enough, as long as we're close enough to the conductor, the electric field is equal to sigma divided by epsilon naught. So the surface just barely above the conductor, this is the electric field above that surface. Now notice that this is actually twice the electric field for an infinite sheet of charge. And the reason for that is because we don't have any electric field inside the conductor. So we only have one surface to worry about. So all of our electric field is essentially concentrated outside of our conductor. Finally, I'd like to thank all my patrons on Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated, and it is you who makes these videos possible. If you aren't currently a patron, to get early video access, behind-the-scenes footage, exclusive content, and join a like-minded community, click the link on screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching.